Good to have you back on today's edition or episode of our book review. I hope you remember the, the book we are, you know, studying at the moment. It is the Four Disciplines of Execution. Yeah, written by who we mentioned before today. <laughs> so in the last video, we we trashed out the introduction and then we discussed discipline one, which is to focus on the wildly important. We all learned you know the benefit of focusing on one goal than having to focus on numerous goals and not achieving you know what we're supposed to at the end of the day so today we are going to be studying discipline two and maybe three depending you know how i don't like to choke us with so much in the video so that it is as short and as interesting as possible so come with me so discipline two titled act on lead measures i'll just go ahead and define what lead measures and lag measures are because these words will occur you know intermittently as we go so so lead measures are the highest impact actions or activities that you and your team must do to accomplish the goals they are the activities most connected to your you know to your wildly important goals so for example if you want to lose your weight your lead measure is to you know cut down your calorie calories intake and then you know increase your um exercise hours that's for lead measures and it, it, it also says lead measures are productive and influenceable they are principles that when judiciously followed can produce very predictable results for example like losing weight the example we just gave him so now on to lag measures it says lag measures are the tracking measurements of the wig say the goal was to lose weight as mentioned earlier the lag measure will be the number of pounds lost over the period on the review so lead measures are as the name implies lead they lead you into the goal so they are the things you must do to achieve the goal the cutting down of the calories and the uh, increase of exercise hours and then the lag measures are the measurements you know of set they are the measurement of the wig so i want to lose uh, 50 kg by december the the lag measure is you know measuring how how far or how close i am to the wig you get so that's you know the difference i made notes so i'll just read from the notes that i made the people make the errors of focusing on lag measures that's the results yeah you can also call lag measures results because they are the evidence that you actually follow the leads it's the lag yes so however you want to put it but you should know that the leads take you make you accomplish the wigs and the large lags l-a-g-s i'll put it up on the screen are the tracking measures for w for the wigs people focus on lags more than leads and this is very dangerous because uh, imagine uh, us having to worry uh, okay let me put it this way uh by the time that you are crying about your lag measures there's absolutely nothing that can be done because you're already seeing the results you know the lags so but you can predict your lags by acting on your lead and that is what chapter two this discipline two is about acting on lead measures so instead of focusing on okay i want to you know increase sales by 20 percent five percent 15 percent i shouldn't be you know looking at the result when i am not manipulating things to favor those results we've said that lead measures are influenceable and predictable so what am i supposed to do to increase revenue custom sound customer service quality product and all of that are the things that will enable me achieve my my wildly important goals so i shouldn't focus on the lags which are the results i should influence my results 
by working on my lead measures, which is, you know, customer service, maybe if that's what the problem is, and quality of product or service, if, all, if that also is what the problem is. Some, for some establishments, it could be that they need to work on the enthusiasm of their employees. It varies from uh, company or firm to firm, depending on you know the issues that you are trying to address or the issues you think are affecting your productivity as a company. So by these few explanations, we already know that a lead measure tells you if you're likely to accomplish your goals, a lead measure, and a lag measure tells you if you actually have accomplished your goals. At the time a lag measure occurs, there's hardly anything that can be done to change it. But a lead measure is virtually within your control. So those are the predictable things that we talked about. Say so for example, while you can't control how often your car breaks down on the road, a lag measure, you can certainly control how often your car receives routine maintenance, a lead measure. And the more you act on the lead measure, the more likely you are to avoid the roadside breakdown. So lag measures cannot be influenced if we overlook lead measures or do not pay attention to lead measures and we just sit and daydream about the lag measures, desire the good results, but we're not ready to put in the hard work. We must identify like you know using the definition of lead measures identify the activities that are that have direct impact on our results that's the only way you know that we can achieve our lags because by the time we're crying about the losses and the things that we couldn't achieve at that time there's actually nothing that we can do about it but before the time that we set for ourselves you know in the future three months four months from now comes we can actually take lead steps to achieving those things that you know we want to achieve another uh, diagram here the conventional thinking says keep your eye on the lag measures the quarterly results the sales numbers pounds lost stress out bite your nails while you wait while you wait we are not supposed to wait, we are supposed to work. And that is what the 4DX principle says. It says focus on moving the lead measures. So as opposed to the conventional thinking, the 4DX principle says focus on moving the lead measures. These are the high leverage actions you take to get the lag measures to move. So the lag measures are the, uh, sale, the sale numbers, the, you know, pounds lost the better health you know so the the lead measures are proper dieting the lead measures for business could be customer service like we stated but you have to focus on them if you focus on the result that's that's i don't know i, I wouldn't want to call that lazy i just want to call that a a wrong channeling of energy because if you sit and you just desire a result and you don't work on the things on the things that work because we, it's not about just working. It's about working the things that work. Because if you, you cannot tell me you're trying to drive sales and you are working on keeping your, uh, um, making your bank, your account officer happy. That is, that is not in any way related to your, you know, for some people related to your increase in sales. So you have to identify those things and it, it, it varies for different businesses. So you have to be able to identify the things that directly impact your results, your WIGs, your goals, work on those things. Those are your lead measures. So somebody wrote, his name is W. Edwards Deming, the management and quality guru said, that's what he is. He said it is best when he he told executives that managing a company by looking at financial data, that's the lag measures, is the equivalent of driving a car by looking in the rearview mirror. So say the results for the last quarter was bad. You cannot make it better by, you know, still looking at the results. You have to find out ways to improve the results. And that is to look for new lead measures if the old ones no longer can serve so lead measures help you project into the future 
but lag measures help you see how well the past efforts did so lead measures future lag measures is like uh, a stock taking <laughs> an evaluation you understand so lead measures help you eliminate surprises because they are predictable and influenceable. You always know what changes to expect based on what you have done. So we continue reading. He said, to achieve a goal you've never achieved before, you must do some things you've never done before. Like we said, the lead measures that no longer work, take them out. Look around you. Who else has achieved this goal or something like it? What did they do differently? Analyze carefully any barriers you foresee and decide together how to overcome them. Use your imagination. What you haven't thought of that might make all the difference. Sometimes you may need to change lead measures because the ones in existence are not working. You need to also sort advice from experienced people. You need to research on people who've had similar challenges and had that they overcome, overcame them. You get, nobody knows it all. I mean, that's why there are materials everywhere for us to learn from and so that we don't make the mistakes that the people who are ahead of us or who went ahead of us made. So sometimes the tools that you need to achieve a thing may change from time to time. Depending on, you know, times and seasons and all of that. Because for a media company, what worked 50, 30 years ago is not what, what, what would work today. So they have to keep changing their lead measures. They have to keep, you know, the last sentence said, the bigger the rock, the more leverage you will need. So when market changes, when things changes, you also will change your leads. Because at the end of the day, what you need is results. But because the times and seasons have changed, you have to focus your energy on the lead measures that will give you the results in the time that you are in. So before I round, before I round up um, Discipline 2, uh, I would like to say this. It is hard for you to track or get data for your lead measure. So say for instance, I am supposed to, um, I like to use relatable examples so that, you know, you can, you can apply them in whatever, you know, aspect of your life where this is needed. But I like to use relatable examples like exercising, even the auto use the same. So say I want to, I want to gather data for my lead measures. I already agreed that I'm going to exercise more and cut down calories. So now I need to be able to measure how much I have exercised this week, which is the data I'm gathering, I'm supposed to gather, and also how much calories I was able to cut down this week. That can be difficult, you know, because sometimes you may exercise like 30 minutes today, 20 next tomorrow. All you're concerned about is just the exercise. But if you consciously track the data, it'll keep you, you know, conscious about the fact that, okay, I'm supposed to exercise for 40 minutes, but I'm doing it for 25. No, that's not okay. That was not what I agreed with myself in the first place. You know, we've always talked, we've always advised that you should improve your self-supervision skill. If you cannot supervise yourself, I repeat, as I've said in a couple of videos, in, on this channel, you can never supervise other people. So I'd like to, the author said, if you are serious about your week, then you must find, you must create a way to track your lead measures, which is what we talked about. Without data, you cannot drive performance on the lead measures. Without lead measures, you don't have leverage. So you have to find a way to get data for your lead measures. You have to find a way to get data for your lead measures. So it will help you. It will even help you help other people because sometimes uh, you you can you know pass on that data to some other person who is facing the same challenge, just to show them these are the things that I did to overcome. And because they are proven, 
principles that worked for you it could work for them too if they are they are really serious about you know making things work yeah so enough about discipline two let's let's move on to discipline three discipline three is keeping a compelling scoreboard yes how do we get to keep a compelling scoreboard? And what's a scoreboard? A scoreboard is where the score is written. A scoreboard is where we can see progress report. A scoreboard is where we know whether we're winning or whether we're losing. That is what should be contained in a scoreboard. So let's dig it. So it says the third discipline is to make sure everyone knows the score at all times so that they can tell whether or not they are winning this is the discipline of engagement. If you, a couple of things I wrote down here. So people play effectively when they see scores. So say for football lovers. No, I don't think. No. Let me use um, basketball lovers. You know there's a board that displays the score so that everybody sees who's winning and who's losing. Yes. So... You know, that in front of all the players, it's enough motivation. Oh, we need to put in more effort or we need to defend our fort so that these guys don't take the win the you know cup from us. You get but in a game where people don't see the score the scoreboard, it's sort of demoralizing. Oh, we don't know what we don't know whether we're better, you know, than we were yesterday because well, we cannot see the scoreboard you get so we don't know if if we're winning we don't know who's losing we need to see the scoreboard people play differently when they see the score they understand the goal so they know what is at stake that is the implication of winning or losing the author said people disengage when they don't know the score but a scoreboard compels action. A scoreboard compels action. So, as a leader of your team, you must make sure that your team has access to the scoreboard. The scoreboard must not necessarily contain all the, you know, plenty data that only the management can understand. It just has to come contain simple summaries of where we came from as a team where we are and where we're supposed to be so from the top of you know the leader down to the least person whether the janitor of your office or whatever everybody needs to be able to know okay we have done this much we need to do this much more the author also advised that let me just quickly read it. You said your, your scoreboard has to be visible. The scoreboard must contain, must not contain complicated data that only top management can understand. Every single member or employee of you, or employee, you know, the people in your team must be able to understand the scoreboard at an instant glance. So don't write things that, it, that would take people 20, 15, 30 minutes to understand. If you want your group or your team to, to you know, be able to track your, your progress within minutes and understand where they, they fall short, because they already know what is at stake, like we stated, it will be easier for them to know what to do or to know which area needs much more effort so the following are the characteristics of a compelling of a scoreboard sorry it has to be simple it has to be visible to the team it should both it should show both lag and lead measures it has to tell at an instant glance whether you are winning or losing we already stated that so uh, the advantages of keeping a compelling scoreboard you know is 
they are numerous they are numerous the author said said not having a scoreboard is like playing in the dark because your people won't know the direction they are going and they won't know how far they've gone okay are we making progress at all if we're not where did we get it wrong if our uh, our revenue rose and then dropped at what point did it drop what are the activities that we were doing that we didn't do if everybody can understand at a glance your scoreboard you, you wouldn't need to spend so much time explaining to people this is what you're doing and this is what you're not doing you get to but the scoreboard has to be as clear and as concise as possible yes just before i wrap up uh this execution three or the third execution discipline of execution i would like to read this it says the four disciplines of execution enables you to set up a winnable game Discipline one narrows your focus to a wildly important goal and establishes a clear finish line. Discipline two creates lead measures that give your team leverage to achieve the goal. This is what this is what makes it a game. The team is making a bet on their lead measures. But without discipline three, without a compelling player scoreboard, not only would the game be lost in the whirlwind, no one would care. So you have to build the enthusiasm of your team by making them see how well they have come and how much more that they need to do. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. I always like to keep it short and simple so that the video doesn't get boring. So we've learned two things today. Discipline two is to focus on your lead measures, put your energy on the things that would affect directly affect your wildly important goals don't focus on the results don't wish for the results work on your leads and the results would naturally be predictable it's just like reading for an exam and oh she, he or she made straight a's you won't be surprised because of course you you prepared for it you you worked on your leads and then chapter three about keeping a compelling scoreboard it is important so everybody in the team knows where we are and where we we where we are measuring it against where we ought to be so see you next time on next episode where we talk about discipline four thank you for joining please don't forget to leave your comments like and share and keep sharing